Welcome back to Pokes Mechanical, guys. This is how to fit rotors and pads on the rear of a 79 series Land Cruiser. Let's get stuck into it. Before you jump into it, let's go through a bit of a safety disclaimer. This is not to be messed with by amateurs. If you are not competent on the tools and you're not 100% sure of yourself, you watch this video right through and you think, no, I don't know if I'm sure of myself about this, do not attempt this. Your life is on the line and everyone else on the road around you is on the line. If you get this wrong, your vehicle's not going to stop and you can have an accident. So do not attempt this unless you are 100% certain you can complete this competently with confidence. Right, that out of the way, let's get into it. Make sure you've got nice flat ground, you've got a solid jack to jack your vehicle up on, and you've got a good set of jack stands where you can support your vehicle safely so it's not gonna move, not gonna fall on you, and you're not gonna have an accident. Once you've got your 79 series jacked up and secure, Grab the correct size wheel nut and uh, remove your massively ridiculous size wheels. Before we do this job, one thing we need to check is we're gonna be pushing the calipers back. So that's pushing the actual piston back. That's gonna push fluid from the back up into the reservoir. You need to make sure that you haven't got uh, too much fluid in your reservoir. If you've got it at the max point and you push the pistons back, there's a fair chance you're gonna overflow your brake fluid into your engine bay and make an absolute mess. And if you don't know, brake fluid works like a paint stripper. Uh, so that's the last thing you wanna do. You don't wanna be getting any brake fluid on any of your parts. I've already drained the rear brakes in this due to the other mods we're doing to this vehicle. Um, so I don't have to worry about that today, but yeah, a syringe or a sucking implement that can hold fluid uh, needs to be used to remove that brake fluid extracted out. You release the handbrake before you start the job. 79 series has this little gap there that allows you to get in behind the pad and you can push against the back of the pad and between the caliper and pull that across to push your piston back in the caliper and get your leverage across. Next step is undo your bottom caliper bolt there. So before you pull that bolt out, uh, then undo your top one. <sighs> Otherwise your caliper will flip up and get in the way and be painful. Take your pads out of your carrier. Now we've got to take this carrier here off. Okay, now you've got your carrier off, you should be able to remove your disc. If you can't, like this, you can see that that's actually tight. Uh, no, that's actually coming off. Uh, quite often you'll find the handbrake shoes will need to be adjusted so they go in and then you can remove your rotor. Sometimes these build up a lip on the inside edge here and that'll catch on the actual drum and won't be able to re be removed. Um, but the adjuster is down under here. So how that's done is you'll have a adjusting hole on your actual drum, which is just there. And you can put your handbrake adjusting tool in and you'll find the gear that's in there. And that's that gear there you'll see that when you adjust this, you can turn the gear by reaching in through the hole in your drum, and then that expands that thread there and pushes each shoe apart each side, and that's what adjusts your brake to make it tighter. And by winding it backwards, back over the top of itself, that's closing the gap in, and that will allow us to get the new drum onto these shoes and allow the rotor to be able to fit. Now we're ready to put on the new drum, uh, the new rotor and drum. Um, one thing I do first is just to make it easy to clean the surface using brake clean. Uh, this is a worth brake clean. Just put your drum on the backwards. That way it's off the ground. You're not going to put it down on the ground and get it oily again. Uh, these, you never know how clean these are going to be. Um, usually these painted surface ones are pretty good, but I always, always give them a clean. You don't want to be contaminating your new shoes with oil or anything and also your new pads. Take it back off, flip it over, and make sure you've got your adjusting hole where you need it for your handbrake down the bottom. Give it a good spray with that. Now remember, we were pushing up and away from ourselves, so that means I've got to find that wheel 
and push it down. Now it's a fair way in on these, so I need to use the other side of my adjuster. And I'm just gonna wind that wheel plenty of times until we get to the point that it's touching on the shoe. Now, that's already getting tight there. A good way to check is just use your adjuster. Make sure you can't turn the diff. Just need to wind it back off a few notches. There we go. And then once you've loosened it off a little bit, make sure you can turn it. It's a heavy diff. It's turning a lot going through to the other side and the tail shaft. Okay, so you've seen that this little slide uh, was broken out of the actual caliper. Um, you can see it sits in there rather loose. That's just gonna drop back out when I install that. It's not gonna stay there. So let's tighten this up, get multi grips, and you can just give this a light squeeze. You're not wanting to bend it up completely, um, but we're just trying to adjust those little bits in a tiny bit. That may be too far, we'll see. And we'll sit this back in, in the hope that this will clip in and over. And that's now nice and tight, it's not gonna fall out. Now while I'm holding this, I'm noticing this one here is a bit of a culprit of being loose and it's probably gonna come loose over more time. So I'll just uh, quickly tighten that one up as well while I'm here. And it does, that's no longer rattly and loose. The other ones are nice and tight, that's good to go. Before we put this on, we wanna make sure that these bolts are gonna hold securely. So we're gonna give these threads a clean, they're very, very dirty, and then we're gonna use a little bit of uh, a medium strength Loctite to hold them in place. So we put our medium strength thread locker on the threads of our bolt. Here's a little trick, if you put too much on for one bolt, don't just put more on the other bolt, just roll your bolts together and uh, you've got an even amount on both. Start them by hand. Now when you start this job, you should always check that your brake pads are the correct ones. You can look up the part number to make sure. You can match your brake pad of your old brake pad to your new shape. So that's just as easy as lining up one on top of the other and they are a perfect match, so they're good to go. We can open that packet. Okay, a simple and easy way is a big pair of multi grips if you have them. A G clamp will do the same thing and you can just push that piston back into the actual caliper as long as it's not seized. To do this easier, you can actually crack open the bleeder valve to push them back in. Oh, this one's tight. Hopefully we don't have a seized caliper. Okay, I've had to jump a step, a couple of steps ahead there to just work out what was going on. The piston wouldn't push all the way back in, so I've bolted the carrier, the caliper back on uh, to the carrier and I've taken the actual bleeder out. The bleeder was blocked. Uh, so I've had to get a small Allen key, ram it down inside the hole there and clean that out with air blower. So basically we've got all the dirt out that was tight and then used an air blower to blow through it and then that freed it up. Now, the other thing I've got a little tub underneath that you can't see there, um, push the piston back in now. You can see that brake fluid starting to run out there. So that's actually allowed the, the piston to go in further. Um, I'll put that bleeder back in. I've cleaned that thread a little bit with a bit of brake clean. Oh, it's a bit tight still. No, there we go. So I'll put that in just by hand. We'll take this back off. I've got an old pad on the other side so I don't damage the new rotor um, when I'm levering against that. Take this off, pull this pad out, and hopefully now we will be able to put that pad in. And now we should be able to get that caliper over the pad and we can, fantastic. Make sure when you're putting that on, the rubbers will actually fold over and you'll have to wiggle them into place to get them to line up. Awesome, so that's everything we've done. Uh, we've got the handbrake adjusted. We've got new shoes in, we've got the caliper in. The last thing we need to do is bleed the brake system. Uh, don't always have to bleed the brake system in this case because I've had a line disconnected on the other side going down to the diff. There's no brake fluid left in the rear at all. Um, so I have to suck it right through and bleed the whole system. So I'll show you that in another video. All right, so we're on to the other side now. We've got a case of the actual uh, brake is locking onto the 
disc. So can't actually really move that forward. It's, oh, maybe it's not. It's turned me into a liar. <laughs> Okay, the final part of the puzzle is that we've got to take this for a drive and bed the brakes in and I'll show you the correct procedure for doing that. So you just need to get your vehicle up to about 60 k's an hour. The first brake you need to do is count down from 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Don't come to a stop. You don't want the brake pads to come stationary in this procedure. Um, on the rotor if you can afford to. Sometimes you're obviously in traffic and you have to. But yeah, it's just a matter of getting it up to 60 and then the next break from six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, and you can see you come back down a walking pace. Then the next one, we'll just drive for a little bit and let the rotors cool down. This area that we do it in is actually quite advantage to us here at Bakers Mechanicals. We've got a bit of a car park on the end of the street. We can turn around in it. This gives you a chance for your rotors to cool down. You're not baking them up, doing repetitive braking straight away. Um, so just give it a little bit, like good 30 seconds or so to uh, let them cool down, then get back up to your speed of 60. Oh, this thing's out, so good. And then harder braking. So from four, three, two, one, and that's probably a little bit too soft. But you get the idea. So then another really hard brake. Five, four, three, two, one. And then we just let them cool down. Your brakes are bedded in. Um, now, this is the important part. After you do this brake, it's brake bedding in because you've just done that hard braking. Um, you need to do a couple of laps of the block because the last thing you want to do is go straight back to your driveway and stop and then your pads are stationary on one section of your rotor and that area can't cool down and dissipate heat and your brand new rotors will have a warp in it because you'll get a spot that stays hot and the rest of it cools down quicker so then you get a difference in thickness on your rotor and that's how your rotors can, can get warped or one of the reasons why your rotors can get warped. So don't just go straight back home and uh, park it go for a little bit of a drive, do some really light braking, use your gears to slow down and um, then yeah, you can let them call off. That's it guys, thanks very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video uh, let me know if it helped you down below in the comments really appreciate you watching and uh, yeah, don't forget the subscribe button and the like button and the bell and all those things and we'll see you on the next video, cheers